more veggies that are unclaimed in the back. So on your way out, please help yourself to whatever's still there. Um, the apples and those two bushel baskets I got from Roberto Fred's farm stand oh, well, nice. at the farmer's market on Saturday. Someone asked the variety. I want to say maybe Macintosh, but I'm not sure for sure. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other vegetables are from, um, so they're from Gong Garden, the organic farm up on Webster Road in Fredonia. Some of them are from Greystone Nature Preserve, which also grows organically in Brockton. Um, they have some demonstration gardens. Actually, that red Swiss chard is all from Greystone. It's really pretty. I just put down a second article, which Mindy brought about, I think you said sustainable food. Yes. Issues. With Joel Salatin, if anyone is familiar with him. Yes. Farm on okay. Virginia. So be sure, if it wasn't there on your way in, be sure to pick it up on your way out. Yep, Carmen's holding it up right now. Um, there's one more little info packet about dehydration, which you can also pick up on your way. Um, That's not part of the discussion. Um, that one is kind of separate. But, um, so, as you know, I think I know most folks here. My name is Sarah. By the way, I'm the Gleaning Project Coordinator at the Chautauqua County Rural Ministry. We've really been enjoying doing a local farmers, local food series this summer. Um, it's just got given us in Dunkirk a chance to get to know different growers and producers that are right in our county. Um, I know sometimes when we're kind of isolated in our sort of urban feeling Dunkirk setting, sometimes we forget how much farmland and agricultural activity is going on so close to us. So we're really lucky that people like Mindy are willing to come down and just share some of their wisdom. And so Mindy's going to share a little bit about what she does. And today she's also going to mainly focus on dehydration. I'm just giving us some tips about dehydrating food. So without further ado, thanks Mindy for being Thank you, Sarah. My name is Melinda McGuinn, and my family and I have a small farm in Fredonia for Route 20. Uh, my daughter, Kaya, came with me today to be my assistant, and I have a son and, of course, my husband. And we raise chickens and rabbits. We do raise ducks, unfortunately, this year. They all got killed by a predator, so we'll have to. It happens. I know it is sad and it's heartbreaking, but it happens. <laughs> but we're going to try that again. and. Um, what else do we do? We grow a lot of our own food. Uh, I feel very strongly about local food. I feel the more you can get in your community, the better, because the money usually goes directly right to the person who made that or grew that food for you. Um, that's what we teach our children, and I think that's very important. It, a lot of studies today show that many children do not know where their food comes from. That's heartbreaking to me. So living in this community is great. We're surrounded by a lot of great agriculture, as Sarah said. Sometimes you forget about that, living in the city, especially if you can't get out much. But I know Dunkirk has restarted their farmer's market. It's on Thursdays from 11 to 6, I believe. Um, it's October now. I'm not sure how far into this month they were going to go. But there is also the Fredonia Farmer's Market. We are a year-round market now. In the winter time, we are at the Masonic Forest Lodge on Route 20 in Fredonia from 10 to 1, from November through May. So um, most people think, you know, once the farmer's market ends outdoors, there isn't anything available anymore locally, which is not true anymore. Um, you might not find the abundance of fruits and vegetables you find in the summer, but there's still meat, there's eggs, there's winter produce, uh, honey. We have a farm that comes that sells maple products. Um, there's all kinds of great things available. So I hope everyone can come and check it out and let their friends and neighbors know and support local agriculture as much as you can. Um, I preserve a lot of our own food. I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home and do that. It is very time consuming. I have, a lot of people come to me and say, I love having all this food, but what do I do with it? I work, I don't have time. I understand because it is time consuming. The best thing you can do is freeze if you have a freezer. That's the quickest way. You know, you just chop things up, put them in a bag, throw it in the freezer. And of course there's canning, which is time consuming. But drying is not very time consuming and it takes very little work. You can just take fresh herbs that you grew yourself, tie them in a little bunch, and 
hang them up in a place where it's going to be fairly dry and not get any direct light. You don't want direct sunlight on anything that you have hanging to dry. It will affect the flavor and it will kind of make things turn brown. Um, this is lemon balm for my garden. Uh, I'll have my daughter passed up around so you all can see it and smell it. And then I have some lavender. Ooh. And I just cut it way down at the beginning of the plant because then you don't even need to bundle it. You can just naturally hang it anywhere. And I have sage. And then I have other things that are, once they're dry and I can crumble it up, I just put it in a jar. Or if you don't have jars, plastic is fine. But you want to make sure it's completely dry before you put it in glass or plastic because that seals out all the air. And if there's any moisture left at all in any of this, it will mold in there. So you want to make sure it's really dry before you seal it up. If you even think it might not be there, it's okay to leave the lid open and sitting on a shelf just you know, check it once in a while, make sure no little spider or whatever, and making a nest in there, which happens sometimes. There's bugs in life, that's just like. But um, always make sure it's very dry before you seal it closed for the winter. And you want to keep things like this as well out of direct light, like under, you know, in your cupboard or on a shelf, just as long as there's no direct light getting on things like this. So if you want to pass some, you know, you just people can smell and feel it and whatever. So. <clears throat> I also brought some books with me that I'll pass around as well. Yes, that's sage. And it's not, you can tell too by feeling it's not quite dry yet. It's still in the process of drying. Oh, you should flip some. Well, it's pretty hardy. It will keep going for a while. Yes. Yes, that is very nice. I'll pass these around. This is an older book. I find that most stuff like this still applies today. It's basic. It gets to the point. You know, sometimes I find people are intimidated by newer cookbooks and books of this nature because it just it's way into too many details and people get overwhelmed. I like older books. It keeps things simple. The simpler, the better. Too much complication leads to problems and worrying and then you mess something up and you don't want to try it anymore. So you can pass it. And I also earmark this is just like a ball. Anyone can get these. They're pretty basic. This is a newer one. I do have an old one, but it's falling apart, so I didn't bring it. <laughs> I use it quite a bit. So, but um, this is I brought my dehydrator with me today. You can find these pretty much anywhere. If you have access to a computer, you can find them. Um, mine I got at an auction for $5. Brand new in the box. Wow. Yard sales, you know, things of that nature. You'd be surprised what you can find before you try and buy new. Um, it comes with trays like this and a big lid. This is strawberry fruit roll. Um, I left it on the tray so I can show you how it just peels off, but I brought some of that with me today that I've been working on all week. Uh, sample, so if anyone would like to try some, you know, you can pass it. Um, this dehydrator came with trays that you can make a roll on. And I'm just going to put these gloves on so I can show you how it feels off. This is better than anything you can get at the store. It is just fruit and a little bit of sugar for preservation purposes. I put it in my blender, pureed it, and then, you know, you pour a thin layer on, like these plastic trays you can get to come with your dehydrator, and then once it's dry, it just comes right off. It's pretty easy. And it, does, it only tastes like, yeah.